Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is going to be a pretty short video as it's going to be a tutorial on how to use these drum pads while doing a live looping session on Ableton. So oftentimes when you do a live session, the pads are used to record, store and then launch the clips. So that means that you can't play percussion through these pads. But instead, you'd have to play it through the keyboard. Now, there's nothing wrong with playing drums through these keyboards, but I mean, if you're like me, it's way more fun to play the drums via these pads. So this video will guide you on exactly how to do that. So before going into much detail, if you find my videos helpful or entertaining in any way, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a lot as a YouTuber and in growing this channel. Before doing a demo on how I do this, I'd like to give you background information on how information is stored in the Arturia Minilab MK2. That way we'll know the basics behind how this device is configured. So the Minilab has eight pads, which means that there are eight different settings or different modes, you know? So the default setting is the first pad setting. If you press the shift button and the first pad lights up, it means that the first mode is activated. And this is the first mode that gets activated when you plug in the Minilab or open Ableton. So I mentioned in my last video that in order to access Ableton through your Minilab, you have to press the shift and the eighth pad, right? Shift and the eighth pad. By doing that, we're going to the eighth mode or the eighth setting on the Minilab. And this setting is designed in such a way that it acts as an interface to Ableton. You can see that by uh, using the top right knob and you can access different tracks through it and the bottom right knob you can access different scenes through it and by pressing these pads you would just record and then launch those clips now you can customize these modes by the MIDI control center software which you might have got with your mini lab for instance, I've customized the second mode such that each pad has its own color. So by pressing shift and the second button, now we're in the second mode. Let me first put in the drum pad. So I have the 707 core kit here. It's probably my favorite. And I use that a lot in my videos. So, so we're now in the second mode, right? And then Playing these pads, each pad has its own unique color. See? So, so it looks kind of cool, right? So you can do that by the MIDI control center. There are more resources online on how to configure it in that way. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on that. So let me go back to the first setting because I mean that's what the default setting is. So to access the drums while we're doing a live loop, we basically fuck. To access the drums while we're doing a live loop, we basically need to switch to a different mode while we're doing the live looping session. Let me put in another instrument on the second track just to demonstrate this. Uh, I'm gonna put in the glass piano. Before doing a demo, the first thing you have to do is to assign the MIDI buttons. So let me go back to my eighth setting and let me assign the MIDI buttons to arm these tracks. You press the MIDI button here and press the arm track. I usually assign the first track to the ninth pad and the second pad to the 10th pad. 
So now keep in mind that this is happening on the eighth setting. So if you switch to the first setting, then the pads won't work. The pads won't arm the tracks. So here I can arm the I can arm the first pad and here I can arm the second pad. So now we need to assign a MIDI button to record the first percussion clip. Let me go back to my first track. We need to assign this record button to a button in our mini lab. So we're currently in the eighth setting. Now we need to assign this button to one of these buttons, but we first need to go back to another setting. So let's go back to our first setting. We do that by pressing shift and the first pad, and we are going to assign this button to um, this knob button. So this button is called CC113. You can assign the bottom left knob button, or you can assign all of any of these knobs. So here's how it's gonna work. So by pressing this knob button, it'll start recording. Right? So now let's do a demo where we tie it all together. So let's go back to our eighth setting. Again, this is the setting where Minilab can interface Ableton, right? So let me arm the second track and uh, let me decrease the tempo to around 92 and let's add the metronome just in case. Side note, always make sure that the default launch setting is toggle. Now this is very important to start and stop the clips. You can go to this setting by going to preferences and we got a tab here called record warp and launch and always make sure that this is in toggle because any other option it won't work. I mean it will work but not as you want to. So make sure it's in toggle. All right. Actually, before recording, let me do the quantization. It's going to help with the timing a lot. So I usually prefer the 16th note quantization. Let's record our second pad. playing, we switch to our first, oh sorry, we arm our first track, like that, and then we switch to our first setting. Now we record our drums, right, by pressing this one. Let me wait for this one. Alright, now. Launching these clips. See, it's pretty cool. So, this is a workaround that I've created, and it's a little annoying 
because you have to have quick fingers. So I don't know if there's a better way to do this. If you know a more efficient way or a better way, please let me know down in the comments. So that's it for today, guys. See you in the next one.